Enderboda, in a language long forgotten, means one who brings sorrow. Countless wild monsters have been slain by her mighty hands, and because of this she has lived up to her name. No one knows when she appeared, and no one knows her motives, but one thing is certain. She's one of the strongest adventurers in the kingdom. What would happen if she suddenly fell in love with a commoner? And the fact that she's marrying him is unbelievable for a woman like that. And start living the normal, ordinary life of a common housewife? This is Habi, Androbota's husband. Angie, are you coming? She looks at him dumbfounded, and always agrees to everything. She said yes. She follows him everywhere, and always obeys him. She can't take her eyes off him. She looked at him like he was the most beautiful man on this planet. His gentlemanly charm drove her crazy. Is it normal for me to stare at him so much? But I can't take my eyes off him. One fine day she was lying on a rooftop wondering if this is a normal life. I don't even know what that means. All I've done is fight and seek adventure. Is that normal? She wondered if I'd failed at that. Her stomach rumbled and she realized she'd been lying there for a while and now she was hungry. Suddenly the thought occurred to her. This is it. She did an incredible somersault and landed off the roof and onto the ground. Her powerful legs did not suffer any damage jumping from such a height. After all, normal life is nothing to me. I'm going to surprise Habby with a delicious home-cooked meal. She then went into the kitchen to put her grand plan into action. For a few minutes looking at the hob I didn't know what to do with it. How does it even switch on? The same thing happened when she looked at different jars with unknown fillings but didn't understand what these things were for at all. Well, here's a pot with holes in it. It must be spoilt. Why even keep such a holy pot in the house? And finally, only now Angraboda realized that she didn't know a thing about cooking. When she realized this, she squealed loudly, had her life as a housewife come to an end. Wait a minute, up to this point in my life, I've tried somehow, I've found food somewhere, haven't I? Then she started to remember where she ate and as it turned out all her life she had been eating in bars and taverns. There was always ready food, cold drinks, and she didn't have to think about cooking. What an idle life. I made the others do everything for me, and I did nothing. Of course I'm obligated to do it with my own hands. I'm a mighty warrior after all. She began to actively search for something that would help her prepare the meal. She looked under the couch, in every corner of the house, under the table, but then she remembered where she had put that thing. She opened the pantry, and said she finally found what she was looking for. She pulled out her huge sword that she had used to kill hundreds of monsters. Good old friend, miss me? She felt more confident now, and she was unstoppable. Outside, a cow was grazing peacefully and quietly under a bright clear sky. But her tranquility was very quickly disturbed, and now she could not chew the grass in peace. In front of her stood the mighty warrior with her sword behind her back. She was so tall that the cow was a small calf beside her. Angboda watched her, staring intently into her eyes. The cow finished the grass and licked her nose with her tongue. Angboda was amused. She smiled, and the cow was calmer. I'll step back for a moment, and you be good and take care of the house, okay? She said goodbye to the cow and went on her way. When she came back she went straight to work, and when she was almost finished her husband came back. He came back tired. He was a little dizzy because he was tired at work. Nato immediately noticed that the house smells very good. What is that smell? Androbota didn't expect him to come back so quickly. She was afraid she'd get everything done. She replied that she was cooking, to which her husband replied that how marvelous. I didn't know you could cook. But when he saw what she had cooked he was shocked, and his wife said it was the head of a giant lizard, caught especially for you with love. I tried very hard. I spent the whole day in the kitchen. Try it and tell me what you think. The husband with the stockpile started the meal. God, it tastes worse than it looks. I can barely hold it in. I'm going to throw up. Her husband ate with all his might, gnashing his teeth as he chewed the disgusting thing. He knew he would break her heart if he told her the truth. Through his tears he said it was delicious, and that made his wife very happy. She said she was very pleased, and it was very hard to find dragons at a time like this. I've heard they're very tasty if you take the poison out of the meat. I can put another tail on your plate if you're really hungry. The husband thought about how to tell her the truth. Then he thought if she tasted it, she'd realize he lied and said it was delicious. Now it's my turn, bon appetit. She was going to eat that dragon, and her husband thought he was only trying to keep her safe. But he ended up hurting her. He prepared for her to taste a piece of this meat and realize he was lying, because it tasted really disgusting. 
Finally she took one bite, chewed it well, and swallowed it. It's not a bad meal for a first time. I can't believe I have a talent. Now her husband doubted if she could even taste the food. A huge dragon stands on the ruins of an ancient temple, and in front of it stands a ball driver. She is confident that she can defeat the monster. Her muscles are hard as stone and her sword is razor sharp. The dragon roared at the top of its voice and then gathered all its energy to attack. It began to breathe flames, which crushed everything in its path, but the warrior managed to bounce back. She then quickly ran towards the monster to strike. She made an incredible leap. By the way, only now it became clear that she was wearing heels. It was an incredible leap. It was so high that she easily flew to the dragon's head, swung her sword, and now it should have been over. But in fact it was only her dream, and she made such a snoring noise that her husband thought he was sleeping with the dragon. A little girl was walking happily through the market. Her father had given her some money and said she could buy anything she wanted. She walked around thinking about what she wanted, and suddenly she had made her choice. What a beautiful apple. It looks like a picture from my picture book. She chose this apple, showed it to the seller, and said she wanted to buy it. But suddenly the girl was frightened, and she forgot that she wanted to buy something. In front of her stood a tall and powerful woman. The little girl had never seen such women. The woman roared in her usual habit, but she meant no harm. But the little girl was still frightened and quickly started to get away from the place. And the tall woman shouted after her that it was a great choice. It upset her. She didn't want to be feared. She just wanted to be like everyone else. I'm so sorry, Habby. And again no one bought anything. Maybe it was a bad idea to work with me. But her husband supported her. Told her not to take it into her head. It's always difficult at first. The main thing in our business is to make it so that you buy and feel welcome here. And Roboda said that when she gets nervous, her face cramps up. But her husband said she's overreacting. Maybe we can just practice a little bit, and it will be more familiar for you. Remember now the happiest moment of your life. It should help. And she started remembering when I threw the leader's head at the feet of an army of monsters and saw the terror in their eyes. That memory made her smile. And her husband said, Can't you think about it a little more? When I bathed in the blood of the hell dragon I slaughtered with my own hands. And her husband said, That's not it either. Think about our wedding. Wasn't it the most beautiful day? And when she remembered the wedding she had a pleasant smile. Yes, I knew you could smile very pleasantly. After a few seconds of remembering the wedding, her nose bled. Apparently she remembered her wedding night and started breathing heavily. Next, she tried selling merchandise with the same smile, and she finally started to succeed. She thought it was easy to get used to, and it inspired her a lot. An old elf grandmother came up to her and took one fruit and asked her how much it cost. A mango costs five gold coins apiece, and Gaboda replied. Five gold, I think we can come to an agreement. It must have been expensive for the grandmother. Granny said she'd give twenty gold coins for five fruit. But the warrior didn't understand what the old woman meant, grabbed her by her clothes and asked her if she was crazy. Her husband ran up to her and told her to let the old woman go to the ground. Some people like to bargain. It's normal. Then Ngaboda apologized to her. But the old woman replied that she didn't need an apology, and such behavior was unacceptable, and she said she would call the guards now. But Ngaboda's husband said that I should not hurry. I am sure we can solve everything peacefully. At that moment his eyes shone, he switched on that charm that attracted his wife. The grandmother, enchanted by his beauty, blushed and prepared to find out what he had prepared. Then she said that maybe she had been a little hasty. She said she wouldn't say anything to anyone, and the girl thanked her for it. If you give me a 35% discount on mangoes and a quarter of the price on red apples, now if I buy at least three, you will reduce the price from three gold coins to two. I also need a 15% discount on green apples, not too sour for me but my grandchildren love them, and I need you to give me a bag for free. And Gerboda thought about how she should trade now, began to analyze in her head what had just happened. Then a very long time later there was nothing left on the counters. I came up to his ears and told him it was time for them to go home. She sat on the bench eating an apple and pondering. Habby thinks being a trader is not for me. But still I tried my best, it's not easy. Oh, that's the little girl who wanted to buy one of our apples. She called the little girl over to her and wanted to say something to her. When the girl turned round to face the warrior, she was startled again. I have something for you. The girl was in a stupor for a few seconds, her whole life flashing before her eyes. 
and she immediately started to run away, and Angerboda rushed to catch up with her. Why run away? At last she caught up with her. The girl was terrified, huddled in a corner, crying and not understanding why she was attacked. She was behaving well, but Angerboda told her to give her a chance to explain herself. You like our apples? Maybe you'd like to take one? Don't be shy. Come and take one. I picked the best apple for you. Why the girl stopped crying. She was silent for a few seconds, and then said what no one expected to hear. Give me the whole bag of apples. And Gerboda said she would only give her one apple, because she couldn't give her the whole bag. But the girl didn't like that. She got angry and took a deep breath, and immediately started crying loudly, saying that she was not her mom, that why she came to her, and that she was scared. People immediately gathered around. They looked at her and said that it was an ogre. It looked like it wanted to kidnap her. They would call the guards. Angerboda couldn't do anything as the girl walked away with a bag full of apples she hadn't lost in a long time. Strange feelings started to overcome her. Then she thought there was something to learn her face was filled with longing and sadness. Waking up early in the morning Angerboda had only one thing on her mind. While still lying in bed she said she could do it. Then washing and combing her hair in the bathroom she kept repeating the same thing. She could do it. Even when her husband was cooking and she was laying out plates and doing other things around the house, she kept saying the same thing. She can do it. And finally when her husband was about to leave, she kissed him and wished him a good day. And finally she did what she'd wanted to do all morning. Finally she said she could do it. The friends sat at the bar and drank. Some had wine, some had beer, and some liked whiskey. Habby's friend whose name was Finley was a halfling. He was congratulating his friend on his new life, and he said it had a good effect on him. And the other friend whose name was Sian also congratulated his friend and said he was very happy for him. And then he cried and he said that he was actually sad. He said that he was the last bachelor with our company. But Kabi tried to support him and said that he was sure that one day he would find someone. It just takes time for that to happen. No, he just wants to hurt you. A pathetic worm like you is no good to anyone, the halfling answered him. Why don't you shut up and go home to your favorite wife with your lovely children, you bloody loser? It's all kind of weird. You went away for a couple of weeks and coming back from your wanderings you say you're married now. Yeah, before that you hadn't shown any interest in women at all. I was already starting to think something very bad about you. Then the halfling kicked him on his leg. It was quite a hard kick. This dumbfounded his friend. He said how can you with such small feet kick so hard? But the dwarf apologized to him and said his foot twitches on its own when he listens to idiots. So, tell me how you met your beloved wife. Or is this one of those embarrassing stories? No, it's more of a marvelous love story. Like a marvelous dream or a fairy tale, filled with romance. I remember that day so well, as if it were yesterday. As you know, I had gone to another orchard to buy a seedling of a special kind of apple tree. But in the middle of the journey, my cart got stuck. It seemed that luck had once again turned away from me. I shouted to my cow to pull the cart, and she is a good girl, and did a very good job of pulling. The wheel was very much in the ground, and with my own strength I could not have done it. But suddenly, when I was running out of strength, someone behind me said, This cart won't move at this rate. Behind me someone stood up, put his hands on the cart, and wanted to help me. When I looked up to see who it was I saw her, it was the most beautiful of women. She said she would help me now, and with a powerful movement of her hand she pushed the cart. I felt all this force and power. It went through me and pierced my heart, and then I fell in love. It was so strong that I flew off with the cow and the cart, many meters away. You have a strange notion of romance, and with a stupid hat what happened? If you like this video then be sure to like and subscribe and click on the bell so you don't miss new videos. If you want me to make a new part of this mamma then write about it in the comments. If I see your activity then I will make a second part. But in the meantime you can watch other videos on my channel. See you soon.